For many Americans, Trey Parker and Matt Stone's 2004 satire Team America World Police came as a complete surprise. The duo, creators of South Park and masters of irreverent, foul-mouthed comedy, decided to do a parody of big-budget action movies such as Roland Emmerich's The Day After Tomorrow, released that same year. However, they inexplicably decided to make the film using elaborate string puppets. The results are astonishing, and definitely not safe for work. I love Team America. It is by turns offensive, full of detail, silly, relevant, thought-provoking, and as in South Park, no one is safe from the mayhem. But where did this style of puppetry come from? It's certainly a far cry from the Muppets or the Mr. Rogers style glove puppets that, for many Americans, are the entire definition of the art of puppetry. They don't really look like the ventriloquist dummy style marionettes best exemplified by Howdy Doody. Did the elaborate and large-headed puppets spring from the imagination of Parker and Stone? Some assumed they did. The truth is that the story begins with an English production company, starting out in the challenging market of the 1950s film and television industry. Through hard work, technical innovation, and incredible artistic daring, this small bunch of filmmakers grew into a world-class team and produced some of the most memorable, creative, and popular puppet films ever made. Team America is a successful lampoon of a whole subcategory of filmmaking, but it never reaches the heights of a group of 1960s puppet masterpieces. This is the story of how those programs came to be, what makes them great, and how they succeeded where Team America failed. Former sound editor Jerry Anderson and his partners began to specialize in producing puppet films after being hired to make a few commercials, and later, a traditional children's TV program for ambitious author Roberta Lee. Tiring of the limitations, Anderson split from Lee to produce a puppet series independently. A western, Four Feather Falls, featured a new technique enabling the puppets to have automated lip sync. Pulses of electricity sent down control wires magnetized to solenoid, which in turn opened the puppet's mouth. This process was later named Super Marionation. After the sale of Four Feather Falls, Jerry Anderson, his wife Sylvia, and business partner Reg Hill produced a series with legendary impresario Lou Grade. Supercar is about a fantastic vehicle that can fly in the upper reaches of the atmosphere and travel under sea or over land. The plot lines of Supercar treated the puppets as if they were characters in a story, instead of props facilitating a gag. This early supermarionation project was among the first series to introduce puppetry as a means of exploring the fantasy and science fiction genres. As a follow-up to Supercar, Lou Grade commissioned Fireball XL5. Released before Doctor Who, Lost in Space, or Star Trek, XL5 is a landmark science fiction adventure series about World Space Patrol astronauts, exploring uncharted reaches of the heavens, making new friends and some new enemies. The sophistication of what was then named AP Films grew with the underwater series Stingray, the first British series to be made entirely in color. These programs feature a host of imaginative villains that could only be realized through puppetry. By this time, the special effects team were producing work of such high quality that they rivaled big-budget Hollywood production crews. Indeed, several alumni would go on to win Oscars and work on the likes of 2001, Star Wars, James Bond, Alien, Superman, and countless others. Supermarionation series utilizing clever photography, editing, and fast-moving vehicles managed to create a level of action never before seen in object performance. A wave of films followed in their footsteps, including the collaborations of Osamu Tezuka and Kinosuke Takeda, as well as Roberta Lee's own Space Patrol. But they were all destined to be overshadowed by what came next. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go! Thunderbirds is often hailed as the greatest work of Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. The complexity of the production reached new heights, but was augmented by a story more original than anything that came before. Widower and billionaire astronaut Jeff Tracy and eccentric genius Brains found International Rescue, an organization dedicated to helping those in danger no matter how hopeless the situation may seem. With their five futuristic Thunderbirds machines piloted by Jeff's five sons, International Rescue can rush to the danger zone at incredible speed. 
Additional support is provided by a global network of intelligence agents, including the stylish Lady Penelope and loyal chauffeur slash former safecracker Parker. A smash hit all over the world, Thunderbird spawned two big screen films. Renamed Century 21 Productions, the company aimed for even more realistic puppets and darker, more adult storylines. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons is a series in which the main character is violently killed in the very first episode, only to return from the grave. Captain Scarlet concerns a Cold War-style war of nerves with unseen aliens who can recreate destroyed objects or persons. Scarlet and the other heroes of the Spectrum organization don't always win against the Mysterons, and the puppet body count is high. Still an international success, Captain Scarlet paved the way for a live-action career for Jerry, who proceeded to make two more puppet series before transitioning to human actors. Joe 90 is the story of an English boy whose scientist father builds a machine in the basement of their country cottage that can transfer and record brain patterns. These patterns are then implanted into the mind of young Joe, who goes on dangerous specialized missions for the World Intelligence Network. For today's adult audience, Joe 90 raises dark questions about ethics and child psychology, but provides pure escapism for young boys, in particular those taunted for wearing glasses. Despite the peculiar concept, critics hardly ever complain about the use of puppetry as a tool for tackling the subject matter. With Joe 90, the Andersons proved that puppetry can be used to tell any story imaginable, and tell it well. The final series is the most bizarre in this chain of eccentric programs. The Secret Service is a sort of cross between Joe 90 and Father Brown, with a dash of quirky linguistics and a smidge of meta-awareness added for good measure. Comedian Stanley Unwin, inventor of a gobbledygook language called Unwinese, plays Father Unwin, a country vicar who is really a secret agent. With a miniaturizing device that allows for puppets to interact with full-size sets, animals, and actors, Father Unwin and Matthew the Gardener protect national security from enemy spies. Cancelled early, the Secret Service is usually regarded as little more than a curiosity. It's easy to understand why, given the union of such disparate elements. But the Secret Service is worth watching as an avant-garde exploration of the borders between the colorful puppet world and a grittier human world. Having invented a subgenre, the Andersons boldly deconstructed it by reversing key conventions. Few TV producers would have dared risk their platform with such experimental material, and no one in the history of puppet films has ever attempted anything as brazenly ambitious. Jerry and Sylvia Anderson moved into live-action filmmaking before their eventual divorce. Jerry returned to puppetry with Terra Hawks in the 1980s. A series of programs influenced by the supermarionation style emerged in this decade, including Go Nagai's X-Bomber, South African space fantasy Interstir, and an anime reimagining of Thunderbirds called Thunderbirds 2086. These programs combined with the advent of home video added fuel to the fire that was the continuing popularity of Supermarionation in general, and Thunderbirds in particular. Thunderbirds was a hit in America. Supercar, Fireball XL5, Stingray, and Captain Scarlet all helped make Lou Grade's distribution company the largest exporter of British media. They were shown in syndication around the country, sold scores of merchandise, and were re-edited into movies for cable and home video. In 2004, a big-budget live-action adaptation of Thunderbirds opened on over 2,000 U.S. movie screens. But this film was deemed a box office bomb, and if the original series was such a success, why is it that some Americans didn't recognize the style when they saw it in Team America? Unlike Fireball XL5, which was given a nationwide Saturday morning screening window on NBC, Thunderbirds failed to secure a U.S. network deal. A bidding war backfired, causing the price to escalate beyond the reach of ABC, CBS, and NBC, and forcing the company to sell the program station by station instead. The airtimes varied, and the programs were sometimes edited or split into shorter installments. This diffused the cultural impact of what Lou Grade had hoped would be his biggest triumph in the United States. A key aspect of Thunderbirds' longevity in the UK was a 1990s revival. Thunderbirds was repeated in a prime slot on BBC Two, and was followed later with broadcasts of Stingray and Captain Scarlet. Given this platform, the then 25-year-old programs proceeded to blow away expectations by becoming a smash hit with a whole new generation of kids, and generating tremendous revenue with sell-out toys and playsets. But no such resurgence occurred in America, where viewers were instead subjected to turbocharged Thunderbirds, an ill-advised attempt to modernize the show. 
a generation of American kids either rarely encountered Thunderbirds or never watched it at all. In the end, Team America is to Thunderbirds and the Super Marionation programs what Peter Jackson's Meet the Feebles is to Jim Henson's Muppets, a clever, X-rated parody of a program originally made for children. But much like the Muppets, the reach of Jerry Anderson's animated series goes beyond target demographics. Adults are mesmerized by the artistry of the miniature vehicles, sets, and props, by the finely detailed sculpture and costumes. Miniature worlds were created on an unprecedented and as yet unmatched scale, and the results are fascinating. The young are engaged by clever writing, action, adventure, and of course, plenty of explosions. Anderson productions are grounded in the principles of striving for excellence and not imposing presuppositions about what can and can't be done within a certain format. In a television landscape dictated by risk-averse executives, they weren't afraid to try something new and chart a fresh course. Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, Stingray, and the rest have humor and charm, but that comes not from mocking the art form, but by a sincere and fun-loving approach, without which Team America and other parodies wouldn't exist. Audiences get it, and of all Jerry Anderson's filmmaking principles, one of the most prominent is never talk down to your audience. Neither Parker and Stone nor Jerry Anderson ever claimed to have a particular affinity for puppets. Yet Anderson strove to make the best possible films he could within the niche that he found himself. Parker and Stone made one film, and rather than push for improvements, moved on to other projects, perhaps not realizing that new puppetry productions for all ages might have their prospects hampered by the presence of a similar-looking adult comedy. While Team America introduced some audiences to this style, it fails to do what the original succeeded at so brilliantly, which is to inspire generations of new fans, as well as future filmmakers, puppeteers, writers, and even pilots, astronauts, and emergency workers. Team America pulls no punches, but Thunderbirds provides a more positive outlook. The series is about not giving up, no matter the cost, protecting human life wherever it is in danger, and using one's resources to make a difference. This isn't a hate video about Team America. It's fun, and it's a good movie with some amazing work in it. But if you've never checked out the original Thunderbirds, maybe you should. No matter how good or bad your preconceptions of it are, it's better than you think. And while you're at it, maybe check out some of today's filmmakers who are pushing the boundaries of puppetry, standing on a foundation built by Super Marionation. Hi, I'm Ben. Thanks so much for watching my video about Team America and Thunderbirds. Thanks to Krutinger Puppets for supporting this video and putting it up on their channel. I'm super excited to be part of what they're doing here. It's an awesome channel. Give it a subscribe, like this video, share it, uh, and check out the other stuff that they have because it's really cool. Uh, if you want to know more about Super Marionation, check out the feature-length documentary filmed in Super Marionation, which is available on Amazon Prime. If you want to know more about a specific Jerry Anderson show, check out the official Jerry Anderson YouTube channel, where they have a series of primers that focus on individual shows, like Thunderbirds, for, for example. Yeah, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.